What a lovely scene. That's probably why they've put a park bench here. Now you're currently looking at me from my wide angle lens, my 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens set at 16 millimeter. And this is really what a lot of new photographers believe the intention that a wide angle lens is to fit everything in. Well, there's something different for me today in this vlog. I want to tell you the real uses and benefits of a wide angle lens. So to get the benefits out of a wide angle lens, you've got to really understand what they do. Wide angle lenses distort perspective. They make objects closer to the camera appear much larger than the ones behind or further away when in reality they are the same size. So you've got to get really up close. So here we are in a, a field full of buttercups. Another advantage of wide angle lenses is that you can go down to quite a slow shutter speed. So I'm currently on 1 25th of a second. So handheld 7.1 aperture. Look how close I am here. What's that, about six inch? Taking advantage of the perspective, as I already mentioned. So I'm focusing on the buttercups there. I've got a hard gradin as well, because uh, the sun is slowly setting. Nice composition, there's some trees in the background, which is gonna be out of focus. Let's just take a shot there. Yeah, that's nice. So the buttercups have been emphasized and a main feature in the foreground. Um, so yeah, next destination. What's also important with using wind on the lens is the choice and use of foreground interest. It's got to be interesting because you've got to remember that there's a big space to fill. Another good idea when using wide angle lens is shoot really low. Include the sky as well, if of course it's an interesting sky. Shoot really low, really close to your foreground interest. Take full advantage again of the perspective. One of the downfalls of using a wide angle lens is the closer you get to your subject, the more further away the distinct objects become. As you know, I love my mountain photographer, and when I first get in, I first got into mountain photography, I thought, let's get a wide angle lens. But in reality, you're at a disadvantage because your background appears much smaller, and that's one of the reasons why I use a telephoto lens. Right, I've moved further into the woodlands. Same sort of thing I'm trying here. I'm focusing on this bluebell here. Look how close that is. This one here. See that? What is that? I'm a six inch away. Uh, and then it's leading onto the tree in the background. There's a lovely bit of splash of light there. Now, I want to avoid a bit of movement in the bluebell, so I put my ISO up to 800, which we can still get away with. Um, open the aperture up to f4. So remember, wide angle lenses increase the size of your foreground, but they decrease the size of your background. You've also got to bear in mind focus. If you're focusing on your object in the foreground really up close, then your background is going to become out of focus. The only way to avoid that is focus stacking. So shoot one image focusing on your foreground, second image on your midground, focus on that, and again your final image focusing on your background, and then let the software weave its magic in post. Personally, I don't mind a bit of natural fall off in focus. You really want front to back sharpness if you're looking at a picture postcard scene, for instance. But fine art, something nice on the wall. Nice bit of bokeh in the background, don't harm anyone. In fact, that's quite nice. I'm set up here in front of these wildflowers, focused on this bunch here, about six or seven inches away from the lens, nicely leading up to the background as the sun is slowly setting. Got some nice colours going on there. Again, the flowers are filling the foreground, 
keeping it interesting. Key things to remember when using a wide angle lens, get up really close to your foreground, take advantage of the distortion in perspective. But bear in mind, you've got your focus um, issues if it becomes an issue. Don't just use wide angle lenses to just get the big wide, wide scene because it can also be your downfall as well because you can end up including unnecessary objects. I find it harder now using a wide angle lens than what I do a telephoto lens, exactly for that reason. So this is the lens I use. This is the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter F4 L with image stabilizer. Fantastic lens, really is weather sealed. Um, the last time I checked the retail for under a thousand pounds, expensive, I know, but it's, it really is worth the investment. I strongly advise you to get one of these lenses if you shoot Canon, of course. I've had this lens for what, about two years now, intended for mountain photography. I don't tend to use it as much as what I want to these days. As I said before, more my telephoto lens, but when it comes to seascapes, nothing better than wide angle lens. I felt a bit out of my comfort zone, to be honest there, using my wide angle lens. Would I swap my telephoto with a wide angle lens? No, I wouldn't. Mainly because my preference is a telephoto because what I do is mountain photography most of the time. I just want to simplify the image. But as you see there, you can still get some good images if you work and take advantage of what a wide angle lens is intended to do in addition to getting the full scene. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Something different, I know. Um, not a usual style. Next week, guess where I'm off to? Back to the Lake District. Better hiking, better mountain photography, no doubt about it. Anyway, until then, keep smiling. Take care. Bye bye for now. <laughs>